Welcome back. Our panel is joining us from their remote locations. NBC News Capitol Hill correspondent Casey Hunt, former Homeland Security Secretary Jay Johnson, NBC News correspondent Carol Lee, and Charles Benson from our NBC affiliate WTMJ in Milwaukee. And Charles, I'm going to let you get started because you're the only one in the convention city. The rest of us are not. <laughs> Charles, is there a convention happening? How were the parties last night? Yeah, wish you could have been here. Milwaukee's a great place to be <laughs> in the summertime. Look, everyone knows uh, this is not the convention that Democrats wanted. However, it is the convention that they have decided to have. And what I mean by that is they believe this was the safe and smart decision not to have a big convention. It is largely going to be an all virtual convention. So we're not going to see the Democratic presidential nominee, Joe Biden, or his running mate, Vice uh, uh, Senator Harris. We are going to see, expected to see, President Trump and Vice President Pence here in Wisconsin next week. Stark contrast, strategically different decisions. Yeah. And by the way, Chuck, that plays well with both parties within their parties. No, it is. You're right in, in, in many ways. And look, I wanted to get you in there on the convention. But Casey Hunt, I want to begin with the with before we get back to the convention with this postal service and what's going to happen on Capitol Hill and whether suddenly recess is over. I want to just show you how how um, much this story is penetrated. Take a look at just how this, this is these are not the biggest city markets in America. This isn't an East Coast bias story. Take a look at how much this postal service story is penetrating America. New sweeping changes to the U.S. Postal Service could mean a delay in getting your mail. Some Montana communities are seeing their local USPS collection boxes disappear. The elimination of letter sorting machines is happening even here in the Lehigh Valley at the main mail hub. So, Casey, the point there um, was to show that this is this is not some DR thing when it comes to the Postal Service. This is something that is affecting so many Americans in their communities. This is something in a way like the virus that everyone is experiencing uh, in, in their own specific ways. And that makes it different from many of these other headline or Chiron driven stories or issues for President Trump. And it's gotten to the point where you have uh, Congressman uh, Jim Cooper, he's from Tennessee, not a progressive fire breather by any stretch of the imagination. It's a pretty uh, conservative with a small C district. And he's saying that they should drag Lewis to joy, the postmaster general, before Congress. And if he doesn't show up, he should be arrested by the sergeant at arms. That's how bad it's gotten in some of these wow. communities. So I do think there is an open question now about whether the House will come back uh, to do something about this. Nothing has been decided at this point, but I do think it's a possibility. And one thing I would say, Chuck, as we talk about this as a political issue, for the Biden campaign, I think they're thinking about this, yes, in terms of the mechanics and whether seniors are getting their, their prescriptions in the mail and all of those mm -hmm. things. But they also see this as a concerted disinformation campaign to undermine American faith <clears throat> in our civic institutions and in the ability of our institutions to function correctly. And they see that as dangerous. And they want to make sure that Americans do believe that their mail will work, that they have ways to get their ballots in, because they see yeah. this as part of the Trump campaign strategy to undermine faith in the election generally, Chuck. Jay, Jay Johnson, the probably the single most trusted government institution uh, has been the U.S. Postal Service going back decades. Um, it does feel as if you undermine the Postal Service, you're undermining a, a, a basic, uh, maybe the most important threat of our, among our most important threads of our democracy. That's correct, Chuck. I think the message to the American public has to be plan your vote think early about how you're going to vote. As soon as you get a ballot, return it in the mail, because we don't quite know what's going to happen in the run-up to election day. I do know this, a properly resourced, mission-oriented agency of our government could do this, could move 100 million ballots in a couple days. Everybody likes to point out that absentee votes, absentee ballots are the same as mail-in ballots. Actually, it's very different because a mail-in ballot is a local act. If it works like it works here in New Jersey, I'm mailing a ballot from my home in Essex County to a board of election location very close by an election 
in, in uh, Essex County. And when they all show up, uh, thousands of them, they, ha they have the same destination. So properly resourced, you could do this. And uh, from what we're hearing, we, we, we lack the leadership in Washington right. to want to make that happen. Uh, Carol Lee, the, the, the head scratcher on this politically is the idea that rural America is a big part of the president's base. Um, and rural America views the Postal Service as an important lifeline. That's absolutely right, Chuck. And the president has said that he's not going to roll back any or push to roll back any of these changes that the Postmaster General has made that have caused some of the delays that we've seen. But I think there's a real question facing the president of whether or not he sticks to that. I spoke with a White House official yesterday who really wouldn't rule out that the president changes his positions on this and that he does try to in some way tamp down the political firestorm which yeah. is coming from both sides of the aisle democrats and republicans and there's a real concern that like his yeah. railing on mail-in voting generally he risks suppressing his own and hurting his own interests and suppressing his own vote chuck um very quickly charles benson this postal service story how how consuming is it to your viewers well, Chuck, we've had two elections already in Wisconsin during the pandemic, one last month, the other one in April, where there was more chaos and confusion and court challenges. And we already saw in real time concerns about ballots, ballots that did not get to voters and then voters who were not able to get those ballots back. We had an unprecedented record number of absentee ballots, about a million one ballots in April. That number could be twice that in November. But having said that, yeah. starting around mid-September, those absentee ballots are going to go into the hands of Wisconsin voters, yeah. and they're going to have up to 45 days to vote. Yeah. We'll see if they end up winning a return. Casey Hunt, very quickly, you covered Bernie Sanders in 16 very closely. What did you make? He, he really made it clear, this is a detente, uh, and then November 4th, I'll be back. <laughs> he did, Chuck. I think it speaks to, quite frankly, President Biden's personal approach. I think he has extended uh, some grace to Bernie Sanders that the Sanders campaign didn't feel that they were extended in the wake uh, of the 2016 presidential primary and nominating contest. I think that's made a real difference. Uh, and I think he also feels like his policies uh, positions are being heard out uh, by the Biden campaign. But certainly, you know, it, they're willing to sing kumbaya for right now heading into the convention week. Yeah. I'm not sure that will last much past uh, an inauguration of a President Biden, but I guess we'll see. Chuck. Well, he didn't say inauguration, Casey. He said November 4th, which I thought was very interesting as well. Anyway, clearly he'll care about that transition <laughs> if there is a transition for Biden. Anyway, um, when we come back, the one big reason you can't count out President Trump's chances of winning re-election. Stay with us. Hello from Washington. I'm Chuck Todd, and thanks for checking out the Meet the Press channel on YouTube. Click on the button down here to subscribe and click over here to watch the latest interviews, highlights, and other digital exclusives.